Hello and bonjour, I'm Sarah Bukhari and you're watching Power Dilemma here at TAG TV. In a Maclean's Canada project survey in partnership with Abacus Data, it was found that for almost every poll question, immigrant Canadians seem to be the most resistant to acknowledging racialized and cultural issues and held the most assimilationist attitudes on the matter of whether Canada should continue to accept Syrian refugees, 30% of immigrant Canadians strongly disagreed, higher than first-generation Canadians by a margin of nine points, and higher than Canadians whose families had been here for multiple generations by 11 points. On whether Islamophobia is a problem in Canada, 22% of immigrant Canadians strongly disagreed compared to 15% of first gens and 11% of multi gens. Does this mean there is a problem with tolerance in our immigrant community? Do you believe so? In looking at the numbers for nearly every question centered on minority groups, immigrant Canadians hold the strongest contrarian views, followed by first generation Canadians, then multi generational Canadians. The elders among the migrant peer group often hailing from Commonwealth or formerly colonized countries are keenly aware of assimilationist pressure and often internalize it for survival's sake. It was common among first wave Caribbeans, for example, to discourage their children from using patios dialect in school and growing their hair beyond a certain length even while the natural hair movement took hold among black communities in the 1970s. Often these perspectives come from fear of being ostracized by the dominant communities and a desire for their children to have the best opportunities possible. Those attitudes can result in views that reflect lessons hammered into their psyche over years and even decades of trying to blend in. Children of immigrants, on the other hand, who grew up as a boxed-in peer group among white students and later white co-workers, internalize a different lesson, safety in numbers. There is a certain comfort in switching out of the code of Eurocentric social standards, which require both effort and a high degree of tolerance for day-to-day misaggressive interactions. So there is a certain comfort in switching out of the code of Eurocentric social standards, which require both effort and a high degree of tolerance for day-to-day microaggressive interactions. Think being asked, where are you really from? When meeting a new white coworker or having a stranger's curious, grasping fingers plunge into your hair while riding public transit. Among those first generation Canadians who may have been born elsewhere but grew up here, the pressure to fit in takes a back seat to asserting one's personal cultural autonomy for the second generation and afterwards. Don't both bother trying. We are probably marching in the streets against assimilationist attitudes and policies. So, folks, today we are going to uh, follow and debate the question of Canadian identity, assimilation in Canada, and what is multiculturalism. So to talk about this, we have our very worthy guest, online on the phone of our first guest is uh, our very very regular speaker mr ali nakvi who is an immigration counsel welcome to my show mr nakvi thank you for inviting me sir and my other worthy guest is mr brett mcdermott who has been on tag tv very uh, several times and he is a political analyst welcome to my show mr uh, mcdermott thanks very much sarah Okay, so my first question is to you, Mr. Nakvi, and if you can define what is the meaning of assimilation in Canada. Uh, thank you, Sarah, uh, for raising these very important uh, issues and questions uh, in today's Canada. Uh, because we are talking about diversity, uh, culture, immigration, uh, we should start by acknowledging that this land we call Canada, we love as our home country, actually belongs to the First Nations. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in the Sasagas that 
uh, legitimate owners of Mississauga in Canada are First Nations of Mississauga and Mississauga. So I always start by acknowledging that, that the First Nations are hosting us in this country and we are obliged and very grateful to them. Um, to answer your question, um, when immigrants come to Canada, like when I came to Canada, uh, assimilation means how to uh, cross the road. Because most of us, as you mentioned, uh, come from countries where uh, the traffic laws are very different. Mm. Uh, Assim assimilation starts with going back to school, Assim assimilation starts with uh, making new friends, uh, learning about how people in Canada who have been here before us uh, live uh, and, and how they keep, treat uh, each other. Uh, most of us, uh, people coming from overseas, do not come from, unfortunately, uh, some of them do, but most of them don't, unfortunately, come from sharing communal societies. Mm. For us, assimilation actually means to learn the fact that paying higher taxes actually uh, results in uh, getting my neighbor treated at, at the hospital where I'll be treated. Uh, assimilation means that, you know, uh, one fine day if I have to go to the hospital, the Minister of, the Federal Minister of Health may be sitting next to me uh, and, and waiting in queue like I am, uh, that there is equality uh, in this country. Which, which so, doesn't happen a lot in a lot of other countries because uh, if you talk about uh, South Asian countries particularly, a minister wouldn't sit with you in a queue to wait for his or her turn. So, uh, Canada teaches us a lot, and for our, on our part, as an immigrant to Canada, uh, and as an advocate of immigration and um, for refugees, I believe that the onus is upon us to take these teachings and learn them uh, and then follow the Canadian way of life. Uh, and the Canadian way of life is, uh, it does not ask us to uh, dissolve ourselves in the melting pot. Uh, we can have our religious freedom uh, and we can have our cultural freedoms as long as they do not interfere with anybody else's freedoms and this is i believe uh, a point that we fail on in a lot of cases so um, assimilation does not mean uh, that i give up myself my culture and my religion but assimilation actually requires me to respect other freedoms more than mine yes yeah, so mr nakvi is right that uh, assimilation means how to cross a road, maybe going back to school and learning new things. But where to draw a line? And at this point, I'd like to ask Mr. Brett McDermott how he defines assimilation in Canada. Well, thanks, Sarah, for the opportunity to, to speak today. I um, I think that this uh, question of assimilation versus celebrating one's differences in, in some ways is a bit of a false dichotomy because you could argue that multiculturalism is, is, is a form of assimilation in that we encourage people to keep their differences and, and, and that is a that is an expression of assimilation. Now that being said, I think you could also argue that when a lot of uh, when a lot of newcomers come to Canada, um, the reality is that it would be very difficult, I think, to function, um, you know, in the labor market and business without knowing at least some English or French. Um, whether that's uh, a requirement uh, set in place for immigrants when they're immigrating to Canada, or whether you know it's, some, it's a decision that they make when they arrive to, to improve their English if they don't speak English, or improve their French if they don't speak English or French uh, prior to arrival, that's a decision they, they can make. Um, I think that um, multiculturalism can exist without um, more moral relativism. And what I mean 
mean by that is that there's a common thread of, of thought in, in, in Canada today and elsewhere too, where we can't make, where people feel that we cannot make a moral pronouncement on any type of practice, any type of cultural tradition and, that, and any type of um, moral outlook. And I, I just profoundly disagree with that. We can have multiculturalism without moral relativism. We can have uh, a, a, a multiculturalism where we can say certain practices like honor killings, certain traditional practices like honor killings or, or uh, uh, female genital mutilation, for instance, female circumcision, it, are, are morally wrong for obvious reasons. Um, I don't think there should be any um, requirement or obligation on the part of Canadians to show any, you know, responsible neutrality, to use Justin Trudeau's words from a number of years ago. Of course, Mr. Trudeau said before he was Prime Minister that he called uh, that, that we should use, quote, responsible neutrality on uh, on honor killings. He did back backtrack a bit on that subsequent to that statement, but it certainly reflects um, a, a lack of desire or an unwillingness to um, make moral pronouncements on cultural traditions that I think we can quite rationally find abhorrent. So I think multiculturalism can exist in a society with without moral relativism, and I, and I, I look forward to that debate continuing in the next little while, but I'm quite willing to, uh, to defend that position, uh, you know, here on Tag TV or anywhere else uh, in Canada. So, Mr. Nakvi, you said that um, uh, assimilation means learning new things about Canada, uh, for example, uh, crossing a road, going back to school, even how to do groceries. But c continue connecting to your uh, cultural uh, precepts or cultural norms. How would you define that people who say that uh, honor killings is a cultural precept, FGM's um, uh, female genital mutilation is, uh, belongs to a certain culture? How would you justify these cultural norms and assimilation in Canada? I don't believe anybody but Mr. Trudeau justify these. And Mr. Trudeau can justify anything in order to get votes uh, and, and funding. So uh, I don't know an immigrant to Canada, a new Canadian, who would stand up and actually defend these abhorrent acts that happen uh, uh, overseas. Uh, you know, it, um, the FGM or the honor killing has nothing to do with any religion. Uh, this is a tribal practice, uh, both of them. And uh, these are denounced by new Canadians, may they be from Africa to South Asia to anywhere on a daily basis. We new Canadians do not condone uh, these practices. We are absolutely against these practices and anybody who tries to justify or give them uh, neutralization uh, terminology we certain, certainly oppose that and we actually vote, should vote these people out who use these abhorrent practices to garner a section of the votes so there yes there are people the radicalized, the extremists uh, who are in our beloved country. Uh, and, you know, we have a, a government who's willing to rehab, import back the ISIS fighters and on our dime rehabilitate them without charging them with any illegal, any criminal offense. So if where does the buck start? The buck starts at uh, if I'm breaking the law in, 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 in Canada and if the authorities do not prosecute me for breaking the law even after finding it out that I've broken the law. So uh, my bigger concern would be that for, you know, the reason we're talking about these issues is because now this, this has come to the surface where, uh, you know, there are uh, politicians who are raising these uh, issues. Uh, I would like to point out that both the corporate parties, 
maybe be the conservatives or uh, you know the former conservative MP or uh, the current Trudeau government, Trudeau Liberal government. They're both using these identity issues hmm. to garner sections of the votes. Uh, they Mr. Nakhvi, yeah. In the solution. Mr. Nakhvi, you've uh, uh, pointed out at identity issues. What is Canadian identity? Let's talk about Canadian identity, and then we will continue on various identities of various immigrant communities. So, what is Canadian identity? The Canadian identity is uh, somebody who is authorized to a b. Uh, claim that he or she is Canadian, uh, believes in uh, Canadian law and do his or her utmost practices and follow Canadian law, uh, is, uh, is a believer in, and uh, uh, somebody who practices equality and uh, is demo is, uh, believes in democracy. These are uh, the basic foundations uh, laid down in the Charter of, uh, of uh, Rights right and Freedoms freedom. for us, mm -hmm. and this is what I think Canadian identity is. Would you? What? What do you have to say, Mr. Uh, Brett McDermott? Well, I think the Canadian identity has, has evolved and changed over the years. Um, I think you know if you look at things historically from you know the from when the American Revolution took place, there was clearly a, a, a different uh, type of identity, different identity in the colonies that would become Canada than in the you know in the United States. Um, the colonies that would become the United States and the colonies that would become Canada were all. British colonies at one point prior to 1776, and then of course the American Revolution took place and there was a divergence in identities and you had the flow of, of United Empire loyalists from uh, the United States of America to, to the colonies that would become Canada, and um, and that helped shape this country's identity that was based heavily in its you know, first number of decades uh, post-American Revolution, um, in line with American, uh, sorry, in line with loyalty to Britain and the British Crown. Of course, the Canadian identity has evolved and changed over the years. We've uh, seen um, how Canadians have uh, seen their identity more associated with social programs like universal health care. A lot of Canadians see their identity that way. And then I think actually the identity, the Canadian identity has evolved and changed again, or more so in the latter part of the 20th century or an early 21st century, where we've seen uh, embrace multiculturalism. Hmm. Although I would always say that multiculturalism does not imply moral relativism. You can have multiculturalism with, while still having a debate about what is moral and what is not moral. Um, there are people who I think in Canada and elsewhere who, who feel that we should not be uh, making moral pronouncements on some practices uh, morally. And, uh, and I think that that reflects a, a, an extreme, or I shouldn't say extreme, but it's, it reflects a, uh, a type of multiculturalism that I can't support. That's not to say that I'm against multiculturalism. I'm in favor of multiculturalism, but one that includes some form of, of moral boundaries. So, okay, yeah, Brett, uh, you've explained, like, what is uh, Canadian identity? Uh, what is the meaning of uh, being Canadian? But the question is, when new immigrants come to Canada, uh, how, what should they do or what should they throw off from their original cultures to be called real Canadians. Yes, they have citizenship. They are Canadian citizens, but what practices should they follow to be connected to Canadian identity? You know what, I think one of the realities about Canada is that there are uh, differing levels of, of, of identification amongst Canadians to being Canadian. And, and what I mean by that is um, the polling has, has shown that uh, across the country a lot of people in, who are long-time citizens of Canada will identify first with their province and, and second with their country. This is you know, true in Atlantic provinces in the West and Quebec. The province where people overwhelmingly identify with the country first as part of their identity and the province second is Ontario. But many, many, many other provinces, people in many, many other provinces, the 
other nine provinces or so, um, people overwhelmingly identify with their, their province oftentimes in their country. So to use that type of logic then with newcomers, um, I don't see a big problem if people have a dual identity based upon where they came from and, and being in Canada. I don't think there's, there's a problem with hyphenated Canadianism. Um, uh, I don't think there's a problem with people, you know, celebrate, um, you know, the soccer team of their, their homeland outside of Canada because, you know, that, that's something that's part of their identity. I don't see any issue with that. I, I live in a neighborhood in Toronto where there's a lot of people who uh, are strong supporters of, of countries other than Canada in the World Cup. And I'm fine with that. That's fine. I don't see an issue with that. There's as long as we've got a common commitment to, um, you know, to to, to um, respect one another and treat each other equally, um, I think that um, we've got a foundation for our country here, and it's a unique country at that. Mm. So, Mr. Nakvi, what do you have to say, uh, like, if you want to add into what uh, Brett said, that new immigrants, when they come to Canada, they do get Canadian citizenship. What do they have to give off? to become real Canadians or connect with or blend in with Canadian identity? It just is very simple. The threshold is actually very low. And it's simply that my freedoms should not interfere or burden or create hardship for anybody else's freedom. That we live, we need to realize, you know, it's a two-way street. Canada accommodates us with open arms, they, we are invited to apply for immigration, immigrate to Canada if we qualify. Uh, if we are, um, uh, once we are here, we have equal opportunities, uh, may it be religion or culture, we can practice it. However, unless and until my religion, religious practices or my moral practices or my cultural practices uh, do not interfere in my neighbor's practice uh, uh, life uh, unless and until something that I do does not make anybody else uncomfortable or, or um, unhappy. Uh, we need to teach ourselves, being new Canadians, that we live in a country uh, where we share things that we all are equal. And, you know, it takes generations for us to realize that because our past generations, maybe even our DNA is structured in a way where equality, realizing equality and realizing a sharing society uh, does not really, uh, um, is digestible for us for a very long time. But, you know, the second generation Canadians, uh, my children who are born here, uh, they do not have those moral, cultural, religious hiccups that I or my parents may have. So, in my opinion, unless and until I don't interfere with somebody else's freedom, I don't hurt anybody's feelings with my uh, religion, my culture, my practices, uh, I could be an equal Canadian. Why is there so much hue and cry about uh, the issue of multiculturalism in Canada recently? If, uh, if someone is, is practicing, if, so, if people are practicing, if Canadians are practicing um, good values and norms from their original countries and they're not interfering with the freedom of their neighbor, then why multiculturalism has become a huge uh, issue of controversy in Canadian politics? So, it is only a controversy in Canadian politics. As I said earlier, both these corporate large parties are using the identity, the uh, immigration, the diversity issues uh, to their advantage. And uh, there are segments of society 
uh, that are extreme on both ends, uh, pro-immigration, anti-immigration, pro-diversity, anti-diversity. And people are trying to claim their corners, claim their territories uh, in, in terms of those uh, votes for the 2019 elections. You know, somebody who has, as a government, failed to provide clean drinking water uh, to uh, First Nations uh, has a big issue on uh, diversity. You know, if you... Whoever it is, if somebody questions the Prime Minister of Canada about who's going to pay Quebec back uh, for uh, the asylum seekers, should not be declared a racist. Uh, uh, whoever is the citizen of Canada, irrespective of what group he or she comes from, has the right to ask the Prime Minister who has made himself available to answer questions in a public gathering about who's going to pay his or her um, province for the extraordinary work they are doing, humanitarian work they are doing for the asylum seekers. This questions, uh, these questions can be asked by uh, members of parliaments in the House of Commons but it cannot be asked by somebody uh, on the street. Yes, he or she may be racist. I don't care. But as a Canadian citizen, he or she had the right to ask that question. So declaring anybody racist who ever asks a question is not Canadian. And I'm very clear about that, mm. irrespective of who or she, who or it may have been who asked the question. Mm. So uh, playing, you know, he's playing with the future of my children here. Mr. Prime Minister, you are playing with the future of our children here uh, by sowing these seeds. Uh, you cannot just call people racist because they raise a question about diversity. You could have convinced somebody that accepting on humanitarian grounds asylum seekers in Canada is um, a mutual responsibility of all Canadians which is our policy mm. under the domestic and international law. But no, uh, the Prime Minister inflamed the debate by using the word racist. And of course, there is, you know, equal and opposite reaction to every action. So, of course, now we have people trying to, um, you know, we use this to their advantage on the other extreme. Brad, what do you have to say to the connection of multiculturalism uh, connected to the question of racism in the back of what uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau recently um, was uh, caught at camera saying? Well, I, I think um, people are, are uh, li we're living in a time where, where um, people are trying to find racism under the carpet, in the broom closet, on people's hard drives, on people's smartphones, and it's 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 almost kind of it, it, it's out of control, frankly. And it's not to say that racism doesn't exist, but people are accusing each other of racism, right, left, and center, um, at the drop of a hat. And I think there needs to be a far more respectful dialogue in Canada uh, on on matters of race. And moreover, I mean if you accuse people of racism over and over and over again, you may be deepening what racism actually is. You may actually be diminishing what what, what it actually is. And so um, I, I think people need to show a lot more restraint uh, in public discourse on, on these matters. That's not to say that racism doesn't exist. It does. But we need to um, be more... Um, we need to be more careful on what we're suggesting is racist and what is not. So how, what is the, how far multiculturalism is uh, good or, or is workable to be a Canadian? This is a very tricky question, but a very sensitive question, because in Canada we have lots and lots of uh, multiple diver diversities, various ethnicities, people of all, you know, spectrum of religions and cultures. Where should we draw the line? Sorry, I'm not quite clear what you mean by where, where should we draw the line? What, 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 draw the line in so what way, sorry? Yeah, so you, you know, you, Brett, you gave the idea of uh, uh, relativism, moral relativism, that uh, people should be uh, practicing their more uh, norms and uh, they should be following their culture as far as it is not um, immoral. So, but, you know, when we talk about multiculturalism, and 
how far is it uh, true and how far is it uh, genuine to be called a Canadian? Well, I think that if somebody says that um, that we can't make moral pronouncements on some cultural traditions, uh, and if we do, we're, we're, we're leaving ourselves open to being accused of intolerance um, and racism, um, then I think that that is, that is where the, 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 the line has been crossed, frankly. Um, I mean, we've seen in a lot of public debates where uh, people like the Prime Minister have said that, uh, that, that we need to ensure that people are, are included in public discourse. We need to be, have an inclusive society. And he, he's quite clear that he, when he, when he uh, criticizes people for, um, for not being willing to um, uh, tolerate um, dissent on, on matters of inclusion, um, I don't think that there's any problem in saying to people that there are some uh, practices that we find morally wrong, and I think that that does not mean that I'm being uh, xenophobic or intolerant of racism. I, I think that there are some items, some practices that people have engaged in uh, globally and in Canada that we rightfully will find as, as morally wrong. Um, that does not mean we lose out on uh, cease being Canadian and we don't have multiculturalism then. So I think there are people on, on, on both the right and the left politically who kind of miss the point. Um, they either do not think or they're too, perhaps too insecure to make a, a moral pronouncement on some people's cultural traditions and practices. And then there are some people on the right who will say, this is this is unacceptable what people are doing and uh, we, it's unacceptable that we have all this diversity and 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 no um, common common thread, common common bind, common theme that binds us together. I, I actually think the commonality of being Canadian is multiculturalism. I think multiculturalism is part of who we are and we can have varying levels of commitment to Canada as an identity, as a country, and still be part of the Canadian family. Um, I think that's quite clear, and people have, have expressed that many, many times in the past. So when we follow multiculturalism, the question arises that um, do the practices of some culture uh, come in stra uh, stark contrast or in opposition to the Charter of Canadian Rights and Freedoms? If Mr. Ali Nakvi could um, elude on that. Well, I, I think we've got, sorry, were you asking me? Sorry. Uh, Mr. Nakvi. Sorry, sorry. That's okay. Uh, Mr. McDermott, please go ahead. It's okay. Yeah, anyone can take the question. Oh, can okay. You so, question, so, yeah, the, the I, question, I, I think, go ahead, Mr. Sorry, go McDermott. Ahead. Do you want to repeat the question? So, my question is, if you talk about multiculturalism, and uh, the question arises that do the practices of some uh, cultures within the multicultural mosaic of Canada, do they come in contrast to the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms or in clash with the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms? Well, I'm sure there are. Uh, Mr. McDermott gave two examples, uh, one of FGM, FGM and the other of uh, honor killing. Uh, of course, the Charter does not uh, protect these uh, you know, tribal, ancient, abhorrent customs uh, still in practice in some countries of the world. Uh, however, uh, what I am the proponent of is once I'm uh, I'm a resident of Canada, uh, working towards becoming a citizen. Since the day I land, the protection of charter applies on me. Yes, but the obligations of the Canadian law also apply on me. Uh, I, you know, uh, as I said earlier, uh, you know, becoming Canadian takes a certain amount of time uh, learning and, and processing the knowledge that I get. And it may take, uh, uh, you know, a generation for that matter. Uh, however, uh, I should not 
practice any of those uh, pra- uh, rituals that I may have done uh, overseas uh, that are against uh, or contrary to the Charter of Rights and, and the Canadian law. So, uh, you know, I may believe in certain things. Uh, I may continue to believe in certain things until I realize that those things are wrong. Uh, it may not happen in a minute or a year, but it should happen eventually uh, and uh, but if I practice that in Canada I uh, should be found liable mm-hmm. uh, it's just like God forbid if somebody murdered somebody and uh, you know they were not found and immigrated to Canada the law will eventually catch on and they may face deportation because of their past criminal act mm-hmm. so uh you know, people may have certain misguided beliefs before they come to Canada, but putting those beliefs in practice uh, uh, should never be condoned. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Mr. McDermott, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that if we had, uh, if we never had the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, um, we'd still have multiculturalism in Canada. Uh, multiculturalism was becoming a bigger and bigger part of what, what it means to be Canadian uh, long before the Charter came along. Um, uh, the Charter certainly um, speaks to you know, equality of everyone before the law, and I mean, nearly everyone in Canada, I think, would agree with that. Um, the, the examples I gave about um, you know, abhorrent uh, moral practices that uh, have gone on elsewhere in the world, um, they're, they're clearly, clearly examples that are quite um, egregious and, and reprehensible. There's, there's more subtle, there are more subtle examples, though, um, in Canada where um, I think you could argue that um, some people may bring some traditions from other parts of the world that we find um, contrary to uh, the Canadian, value, Canadian values of equality and respect for differences. Um, many, many people around the world uh, culturally um, tend to th- default to the notion that, that that women should stay at home and raise children and, and, and clean and cook and so on in the home. And, and in my view, I don't think that we should be gender profiling women in such a way where we would expect them to do that and not expect uh, husbands to do some of the cooking and cleaning in the home. So um, it's a more it's a more subtle example of a less blatant example of um, a, a cultural practice that I think we can we can express disagreement with and say it, it, it it's against it goes against the Canadian values of equality before the law everyone is equal before the law but we would have that I think whether we had the charter or not um, and you know I, I think ultimately the charter is a political document I know uh, I mean it's obviously a legal document a constitutional document but it, it is also a political document. Um, it was brought in, I think, partially by Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau and the provincial leaders at the time in the early 80s to create something to which all Canadians could look to and say, that makes me proud to be Canadian. Um, I think, uh, unfortunately, in the 36 years or so since the Charter uh, came into being, um, not all Canadians like uh, some of the decisions uh, that have come about as a result of the Charter. And I'm not saying that they're right or wrong to agree with those decisions. I'm saying that their disagreement with a lot of Charter-based rulings um, reflects how the the Charter is not essential to Canada and the Charter can be... um, um, misconstrued as as, a, as as something that is essential to Canada. We had equality before the law, and we had equality amongst Canadians, and we had respect for cultural and ethnic tradition, ethnic sorry, cultural traditions, and multiculturalism long before we had had the charter. So I'll, um, I'll leave it at that for now. Okay, gentlemen, thank you so much for participating in my show. Thank you, Mr. Ali Nakvi, who is a 
Immigration Council. And thank you very much, Mr. Brett McDermott, who is a political analyst. Uh, viewers, we were tackling with the question of Canadian assimilation, multiculturalism, and uh, we also touched upon uh, racism a little bit. So um, as our gentlemen analyzed, as our speakers analyzed, that assimilation for new immigrants means learning new things about Canada, crossing a road, learning uh, the Canadian system, learning the Canadian culture. And the real test of multiculturalism is that uh, you should do everything in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, anything which does not interfere with the freedom of your neighbor. But at the same time, you are obliged to follow Canadian law. With this thought, we will see you again. Ciao.